so it seems that we are live so good morning evening and afternoon to everybody who's joined our webinar today because the topic that we're going to be running this webinar thursday is extremely interesting and pretty crucial for lots of people who might want to join the fintech industry from the very beginning we will be talking about how much can you earn running the fintech company or working at the fintech specialist such as developer marketer or wherever you are technically what does it cost to dive into the fintech industry? And what are the outcomes of diving into the fintech industry as well? Like, what will you get out of it? So the topic is pretty crucial and pretty interesting for a bunch of different reasons. First of all, because the recession is coming and that's something you hear every single day. And lots of companies are doing the layoffs and lots of people are losing their jobs, but not the fintech ones. Because technically, fintech companies are the most stable in this case, as long as they are operate with the money system. And they're going to be the latest ones who are going to drop in the whole crisis schema. So this is the first reason to pay attention to it. And secondly, every single thing that's about managing your money and uh, making any transactions, making something with your money and raising your capital, is about being extremely profitable for the owners of this business. Obviously, because uh, enlarging your capital is something that everybody is seeking for and rushing for all their life. So these companies are the ones who always win. So anybody, what we're going to talk about today is going to be divided into several different sub aspects. So we will discuss the fintech as an industry itself. like. What is it built about? Why is it so? How does it work and why? And the next thing is going to be about how to join the fintech. What do you need to know about it? What skills do you need to have? And finally, what are the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get into the fintech industry and how much can you earn from that? So stay tuned, watch till the end of the webinar because this one is expected to be extremely helpful for anybody seeking for the opportunities in the new area of work. But anyway, let's start small. What is fintech itself? Like, why do we talk about it? What is it about? Why Insert as a company was built on the fintech and it's been highly profitable? Shortly, it is the simplification word of the financial technology. And technically, it is the process of application, the technology to financial services. Like financial services as the entity itself existed from the very beginning of the time. Like, you know, we had some trading of coins or some money from the early beginning of our planet, but and the financial services delivered themselves as well like that. And the technology being applicable to the finances became pretty popular approach something like 30 or 40 years ago, so not too long. At, at the same time, this became a game changer, especially with the fact that computational abilities started growing, growing, and growing more and more. So this relatively new field has disrupted traditional financial services by making them, first of all, faster. And this is the most important part, because the sooner you can sell the share stock, the sooner you can get the result, the sooner you can get anything, the better it's going to be. And as soon as the computational ability is rose, we got such an opportunity. Moreover, this made the financial services more convenient and more affordable, even though that might sound funny. But yes, technology made the financial services more affordable. And one of the biggest advantages of fintech is its potential to generate high income. This is the main idea, and this is why we're running this webinar and we're talking about it. And we will explore how fintech can bring you to different incomes and possibly even raise you to the six-figure income that we have spoken about in the title. It's not just a loud title. It is a real opportunity that you have to pay attention at. And again, if you lose, you technically lose nothing. But if you try and succeed, this is much more important part that you definitely need to pay attention at. So first of all, the first thing I'd like to start with is the opportunities that you have. Because technically, fintech, just as any other industry, it grows it evolves and it develops itself. And the more variants you have for the fintech, the more you're going to be able to reach and to enlarge and to scale. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is who do you need to be to start getting money in fintech? What are the professions or industries that can be helpful 
and in combination with financial services and technology can become an awesome career opportunities. So again, let's not forget that fintech is a rapidly growing field and it offers a wide range of career opportunities even now, even though it is relatively new stuff at all. And some of the most lucrative positions in fintech include the several ones, for example. The data scientist. So data scientist is approximately a new profession as well. And for example, a couple of decades ago, you might not know about those because they've been working only in the, some institutions, in some governmental structures, in some universities, etc. But during the last several years, they've become extremely popular because lots of companies understood that analyzing your data can bring you to the awesome results. And this is the trick that we are applying every single day in the fintech fields as well, managing money, managing risks, leveraging some issues, etc. So data scientists are in high demand because they are responsible for collecting, analyzing, and the most important, interpreting the data. It is not enough just to gather the data. You need to understand how to look at it and how to make the conclusions. So with FinTech, companies gather in vast amounts of data. And data scientists can use it to improve customer experience, to predict the trends, and moreover, to help businesses make more informed decisions. Even taking a look at the current recession issues that we have at the moment, that might be funny, but to think so, this recession has been predicted like three years in advance. And the crisis and the recession that we had in 28 was not like that. Like in 2008, it happened immediately. It happened without any prediction or something or forecasting. And everybody was pretty shocked. Like just several companies survived by predicting and forecasting that, but nobody listened to them. Nowadays, again, the recession was predicted like three years ago. And even now, it's not hidden hard just because everybody was prepared. Everybody started preparing in advance. Yes, the things were not pretty easy. But at the same time, the data scientists were the ones who ruled this recession period by forecasting it in advance, as in advance as possible. But anyway, that's not the only profession to take a look at, because we also have software developers, obviously. Software developers are responsible for creating and maintaining the software that powers fintech platforms. And in fintech, such people are in high demand because they are responsible for maintaining systems that would allow customers to access financial services. And this is the most important part, because it is not enough just to create some sort of the system. It's more important to maintain it as much as possible. And if you cannot maintain it correctly, you just will not be able to stay on top of the industry and to stay on top of the niche as well. So experienced software developers who are available to develop some sort of the roll back stable and drop off stable systems which will not fall down because of the overloading because of some issues etc those people are the most important in the case because technically they can maintain the whole business just by making sure it works in a stable way just a simple example the banking systems right now pay an extreme amounts of money for the algorithms where you can save literally milliseconds trading on stocks just because these milliseconds usually decide whether you're going to close the bond with the plus or with the minus and this is just a simple example of where the great application of minds where you think with your own mind and you understand what's going on allows you to make sure everything's going to be implemented in the correct way but Let's reflect a little bit far from the mar from the uh, development professions and talk about marketers. That might sound silly and it might sound silly as well, but anyway, digital marketers are the ones responsible for creating and executing strategies to promote the fintech services. And let's face it, there are thousands and maybe hundreds of thousands of different financial services all, all over the world nowadays. Like there is... The, Dozens of them, lots of them, and every single one works differently. And wins the one who has the most different services and the right approaches. 
And if you do the marketing strategy correctly, if you sell that in the right way, this is where you will be getting your money and this is where you will be leading your product to success. When you lead your company and your product to success, you earn your bonus. And this is the main idea. So if you see that you might apply your knowledge and creativity as digital marketing, try taking a look at the fintech area because this is where the most creative things are happening at the moment. And people who have been ready to transform their financial services businesses, which existed for an extremely long period of time, into the technological companies, they are usually the ones mostly open for the creativeness. So this is the key and this is the main idea. So take a look at the digital marketing, pay attention to what and where can you bring the value and pay it as much as possible. So that's kind of how it works. And finally, let's try, what about people who know everything, who did and started with development, who did some business analysis and they know marketing as well. I'm the one like that as well. I've started as a developer, then I switched to the project management, then to the product management. And that's the key. Product managers are the kings of the novelty world of fintech because they are responsible for overseeing the development of products and services. They are the ones who generate the long-term roadmap and they understand what features should be implemented in the long-term perspective to make sure this thing will be delivered correctly. They work closely with the software developers and with the designers and with the marketers and with the data analysts because technically they are the main... Um, moving part that connects all these wheels together and they are foreseeing and forecasting the main idea of the product development. Unless you understand how it's going to work, you will not be able to scale your product. And these guys are the ones who make the product scalable. So if you think that this is the main point of impact, you are exactly right because Product managers are the ones delivering the best solutions to the market. And in case these solutions succeed, they are the ones who take the biggest stake out of the table. So think of that. Technically, that's a combination of different things that might be a bit hard, but you will be able to run that in a perfect variant. But it is might be seem like a daydreaming about like, hey, here are different professions. You can go there, there, and there. But what do you need? to jump into the six-figure income of the fintech. Like, what skills do you need? What do you need to know? How do you need to deal with those? And the answer is pretty simple. You will need to develop a unique set of skills just as in any other business. But some of the most important skills there, they are pretty simple and they are pretty predictable. So how to get on this train? Don't forget that this train is moving and... As soon as recession is happening, this train will be moving further and further from you until you're going to jump in into it right here and now and start earning. So here are several different things. First of all, technical skills. FinTech is the technology-driven industry. Do not forget about it. And having technical skills is critical for success of your business and for success of your personal development. So having technical skills is Something that will allow you being proficient in programming languages, in data analysis, in software development, and you will be the one maintaining the whole product. You can start your company by building some small product and you can fix and, and run it on your own. But at the same time, you can join a big company and you can make it work there as well in the same way. And this is the best part that you can technically make it work in any way possible just out of that. How crazy is that? When were this possible to be done as well? But another thing here is analytical skills because fintech companies, they rely heavily on data to make decisions and having strong analytical skills is pretty important as well. So um, you should be comfortable working with different data sets. You should be comfortable with analyzing the old uh, things and events that happened with the things happening now. Don't forget that we have such a thing as the time series analysis, when every single event is the cyclic. It has happened several years ago. It will happen over again and over again and over again. And you need to see these connections. You need to be able to pull out these ropes to understand what skills will require what, what sequence of actions will cause what things. There is a bunch of the things like domino effect, and if you forecast them correctly, you will be able just to transform them into the right place, into the right thing. So this is the trick 
of having the correct analytical skills, whoever you are, whether you are the data analyst or you are the marketer or you are the software developer, build the sequences of conclusions, of ideas, of predecessors, and that's what it's going to build you the right way of moving. Another thing uh, that's quite important, especially if you want to run something on your own, is the thing called business acumen. FinTech is a business, obviously, and having a solid understanding of business principles is extremely essential in this case, because you should understand how to create and execute the business strategies, how to manage the budgets, how to work with the P&L and cash flow, how to navigate the regulatory environment, especially if you are working in the USA, for example, or in the Canada or in any other country that is super crucial regarding the regulations. FinTech is the thing that has been highly regulated by the compliance advisors as well. And you need to make sure that your product corresponds to compliance. You need to make sure that you have the right licensing. So if you are the one who want to run your personal business and to make it work correctly, this is the thing where you need to start with. You need to make sure that your business is built on the right basis and having the business acumen is something needed here. But Hey, let's take a look at this all from the other perspective. What is the thing that combines all of the skills together? So we already had the business acumen, we already had the analytical skills, we already had the technical skills. How to combine them all and why and what is the skill that is the most important one gathering all the things in one place? I think you have known the answer already, but before you will provide your answer and start thinking, don't forget to like this video, to subscribe, and to write your comment if you know the answer. And the answer is soft skills. Maybe obvious, but yes, these are the soft skills. These mm -hmm. are the things like a communication, collaboration, problem solving, and they are extremely essential in FinTech because technically you need to work effectively with the cross-functional teams to communicate complex ideas to non-technical stakeholders and be able to adapt to change the circumstances. Soft skills is about working to people, is about being a good psychologist, is about being a manipulator some way, but it is about making you earn money from the very beginning. You will need to prove your point to the technical people. You will need to prove the new ideas to the non-technical ones. You will need to make sure that you are working in the correct way with the cross-functional teams where developers and marketers and designers are at rivalry and they are ready to kill each other before implementing any product. And person who's going to be a good mediator or negotiator is the one who's going to rule this whole industry just because of the skills they have. And... Honestly, soft skills is something that you'll never be taught in the university or you will never be taught in um, just by reading some books. This is something that you can acquire by your work in progress, by being adaptive, by ensuring that your adaptiveness is developing correctly. So if you want to make sure this works, start working your soft skills from the very beginning. And this is the thing that will lead you to a high incomes. Just because the principle is simple. You might not be the smartest guy in the room, but you might be the most adaptive one. And you will be sponging in all this data and all this knowledge into your head. And this is where your soft skills become to evolve. You cannot sponge in any data until you start talking to people. And that's the most important trick in this case. But let's move forward. So you have understood the ideas. You know which profession you need. You know what skills you have. You have this step-by-step -step plan, like dive into the fintech, identify your profession, develop your skills, think of whether you want to be the hired employee or the businessman. If you want to be the businessman, that's obvious for you. Start building your thing. But if you want to join a big team just to see how it goes, where to go, what to do, which companies can help you. So where to go for the fintech, where to go for it? I'm going to provide several different companies who are the market leaders and you should think of maybe joining them as the first like try of your flow just to understand how the things are going. So this will be the list of companies who provide an extremely awesome payments who are the leaders of the industry and they have emerged within the last 10 years like within the last decade and that's the most interesting part. So the first one is Stripe. 
You have probably heard about this uh, United Kingdom payment system. And this is a payment processing company, technically. And except of the payment system, they offer a range of financial services for businesses. They are mostly known for the employee market for its generous compensation packages. It includes high salaries, it includes stock options, it includes some insurance abilities, etc. Because honestly, working the great team is not only about the high salary, but about the opportunities that you'll be getting. And that's exactly what Stripe provides you. So you can be a shareholder, you can be the uh, driver of the company, you can establish the right development process, and that's an awesome company known for generous compensations again. So think of it. Think of working with that company because it provides you some awesome opportunities. And here is the direct competitor of Stripe called Brex. Brex is also a financial services company. Surprise, surprise. And it offers a credit cards and cash management solutions to businesses. So Brex is known for offering competitive salaries and also strong benefits package. So, for example, if you're resigning from the company, you'll be getting an awesome golden parachute. You are getting some compensation, etc. And it is pretty hard to get into this company as well. But when you do this, that's just incredible experience because you are getting some awesome money and you are getting an incredible income as well. So think of this company as your opportunity and your golden ticket into life. Another company that you might have heard about and it was on everybody's ears during the last year, the first one of the first uh, unicorns is Robinhood. Yes, Robinhood, you have heard about it, I'm sure. Probably somebody of you tried the stock trading via the Robinhood platform as well. So, as I already said, it's a commission-free trading platform that... Technically, it has disrupted the traditional brokerage industry. They became the first one to be the commission-free trading platform, just to think of it. They have turned over the game. And from the perspective of employees, yeah, they have disrupted the game. They have made an extremely and absolutely new domain in the fintech. But this has brought that much money that they have started technically caring about their employees as much as possible. And they known for offering high salaries and a fast-paced work environment. This is pretty important. These guys were able to transform the whole industry in two years, technically. So just imagine what processes are running inside their company and how are they operating. That's just incredible and just awesome thing to run. So this is the thing to pay attention at and to try your possibilities at as well. And the last company last of the four top of ours. Square. It's a financial services company that offers the payment processing, lending, and other financial services to businesses. Technically, it's pretty similar to Stripe, but the scalability and the business domain is a bit different, though. And they have a pretty interesting competitive compensation packages, for example. You can get a five- or six-figure salary easily and focus on the employee as your self-development. So Square is the company that trades the employees in a hard way. They used to do the talent nurturing and talent acquisition from the internal processes. So they are raising their talents. They are working hard to make sure they are being developed correctly. So if you want to become a specialist of the industry and get a high advantage of your development, Square is the place where you should go to start earning the five or six figure income. And finally, Instead of the summary, we have covered lots of different things. We have covered the professions, we have covered the skills, we have covered and awesome companies that provide you a possibility. But what should you do to start earning in fintech? Well, fintech offers a wide range of opportunities for professionals looking to earn. And it allows you to earn the six-figure income easily. And you can scale. You cannot just stop at this scale, but you can also navigate your business, to your services, etc. And with the right skills and experience, you can work in a variety of roles, such as the data scientists, software developers, digital marketers, product managers. And to succeed in the fintech, you will just need to make sure that your skills are developed in the right way. And if they are not, you should work on the hard development of those. This is the key that will lead you to the high income, to the high salaries, and to the awesome results. Just don't be scared about doing that. 
Just keep growing, keep moving. And that's where the fintech can bring you to. I hope this video was helpful. And if you liked it, do not forget to push the like button, to write some interesting comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions if you are going to try, maybe if you are already in fintech, maybe you are the CEO or the business developer. And finally, don't forget to take a look at the www.insart.com. We do a variety of financial and fintech services, and maybe we will become your first place of work in this area as well. So good luck and stay healthy, stay safe, and start earning with fintech industry. Bye.